Rachel, I'm so glad you could join me for this Zoom. I want to see if you can help me with my, my Zoom presentation skills, and I want to see what we can accomplish in less than 10 minutes. Okay, no problem. Let's get to it. So there are a few like quick wins that we can have with your, your overall virtual presence. Um, so the first one actually is that I'd love to see your face. So if you can go ahead and adjust your lens so that your lens, if possible, is at eye height. So like I'm gonna lift up my computer a little bit. Oh yeah. Better. I don't know if I have any like books. I have a board game over here. Yes. If I can get a board game under the laptop. Yep, I mean, you know, these days, Scott, you have to work with whatever you have, but using whatever props you might have to lift your computer up so that your lens is at eye level there will help me feel more directly connected to you. So this already looks much better. Um, I'd, I'd love, I'm not sure if you're able to, when it comes to like lighting, right? Um, I want the focal point of the light to be your face. Right now it's behind you. Right, so it's a nice sunny, sunny June day here. I know, which is just brilliant. And you know, in Boston, we love that. Um, I'm curious if there might be either a way to put a curtain over that window or orient yourself so that that window is actually behind your computer. Okay. All right. I'm going to move around because I didn't get around to picking curtains for my kitchen. So there is no curtain in that window, but let me see what I can do. And I'm going to actually turn on some more lights here. Is the, is the more light better? Yes. Yeah, so the more light is better. The, there is a reflection from the frame that's behind you. And so that's something that, you know, it's not like you need to at this point completely remove anything interesting off of your walls, but it's just the glare is something that you're going to want to be mindful of. Okay. So this I think is better. Okay. To be honest. Um, I will say, and, and I'm really getting a little nitpicky here, but there are lots of different colors going on in that particular picture. And so we do lose you a little bit. Um, I always feel like because I'm sometimes using the keyboard, like my inclination is to be pretty close to the camera. Is that a bad thing? So here's what happens when you're too close to the camera. So if I were to be talking to you like this the whole time, what does that do to, you, to your experience? It feels a little bit like you're getting up in my personal space. And um, I wonder if you've had a breath mint today, even though we're only communicating on Zoom. Right, and so that reaction, right, the reaction that we have to, particularly in professional settings, to having that respectful distance doesn't disappear in virtual settings. So I want to um, move this a little bit more away from me, I guess. Yeah, right, and perfect, you adjusted the lens there. Great, yeah, that's much better. So now I can tell that you're sitting in a casual, comfortable position, right? There's like a slight lean in with your upper body just in terms of the angle that I can perceive. And so I'm like, okay, like this is, I'm getting so much more information from your body language just from that one adjustment. And you haven't really even moved or gestured yet. This happened after I talked with you the first time and I was interviewing another speech consultant and he was adjusting the camera and I noticed that he was wearing shorts with his dress shirt. So what's your advice on either being fully dressed or is it okay to wear pajama bottoms and fuzzy slippers when you Zoom? If you are having a conversation with a client or a conversation with your team internally and if you were in person you would be you know, dressed with your business attire and you would have a mindset of I have to be on my game, I have to be articulate, and that is the impression that I want to share. Body language is this amazing thing where, yes, it's the impression you leave with others, but it's also reinforcing that feeling for yourself. So if your body and your mind are used to being in that state when you are in full business attire, you've done your hair, you have your accessories on exactly as you need them, you have all of your notes, you've spent exactly the right amount of time preparing for the meeting. Like none of that should disappear in a virtual world. Okay, so I have to admit, I'm curious what you're wearing, but like I am wearing sandals, which I don't really feel like are part of my usual business attire. So footwear, and this is where my dancing background comes in. I think your feet have to be comfortable. 
So you might be wearing fuzzy slippers right now. I am in bare feet. Uh-huh. I am in bare feet and here's why. Another big part of what I coach people is um, connecting with the floor as a, as a core anchor to your presence. And being able to, you know, whether it's with bare feet or socks or, or uh, shoes that are not too tight, whatever can help in that regard in connecting you more deeply to the ground can help you with your presence up top. And you also always stand up when you Zoom. Do you recommend that your clients figure out a way to be standing if they're going to be presenting in a meeting or presenting to a group? If you're going to be presenting in a way that you might be standing up in front of a boardroom and running people through a slide deck or in an auditorium in front of hundreds, thousands of people, absolutely stand. Uh, but if it's more of a, a small internal meme where everyone would be gathered around a meeting table, you know, you can still access a lot of this presence work and movement seated. Um, the last thing I just was curious about is like just sound volume level and you know some people use the giant over the ear headsets or they have the AirPods in. I notice you don't use either of those and when we're talking I can hear that you're kind of in a room there's a little ambient sound. It's not the crispest clearest sound I've ever heard but like how do you think about that? Am I talking loud enough right now and is it ever worth wearing headphones or you know kind of having that built-in microphone thing going on? When it comes to headphones, I think the more minimal, the better. Uh, again, like we're trying to emulate the in-person conversation as much as possible. So wearing like a big noise canceling headphone, while that might increase the quality of the sound, it will kind of take away a little bit from this moment we're trying to create virtually. Um, I would say you know, AirPods can be great. They, having the microphone a little bit closer to your mouth helps the sound really pick up on your, your vocals. Um, sometimes I use a microphone like this. Another really great option is a, a little mic that can clip on, almost like you see in commercials or, uh, sorry, not commercials, interviews, television interviews, because then that's just a very subtle pickup. The other thing before I say goodbye is, are you someone who waves before you end a Zoom meeting or do you just kind of smile and let it end? So here's what I do. I make sure that as I'm leaving the meeting, I look up to the lens. So instead of looking at the image of you, I look to the lens because I know that by looking at the lens, you will have my eyes on you, right? So I look at the lens and I do just a pleasant face and then I hover my mouse over where I need it to be and then click off. All right, I'm gonna try that. Thanks for the time, Rachel. It was good chatting with you. I my pleasure, Scott. You look great. <laughs>